King's Math School admissions test, uh, scene four, take two. Smashed it. So when I arrived for the exam, uh, the first thing I noticed is the amount of people there. I was a little bit intimidated. Uh, the paper itself, uh, it's yellow. Uh, it also has 18 questions. One of the things you might not know or expect is that each question takes around one or two pages, uh, which is quite different from most exams. Although it may seem quite scary, the amount of space you're given is just so you can definitely get all your thoughts down. And even if you can't complete the question, you can write down all you're working out. Although the marks aren't written for the questions, uh, you still do get marks for working out. So if you're stuck on a question and you honestly don't know how to get to the answer, as long as you have some sort of method and you just get down what you're thinking on paper uh, and write out what you would do, you can still get a few marks. Try to do the questions to the best of your ability, but if you're too stuck on one and you think it's taking up too much time, just skip it and move to the next one. Although they don't have the marks written next to them, you can somewhat approximate which questions give you more marks than others. So if you think a question is really easy, it is probably worth less marks than some of the other ones. So take that into account while doing the exam. Some people might start panicking once they get to 20 or 30 minutes left. Uh, but everyone needs to know that that won't be an issue and as long as you just keep doing what you were doing and try to use any remaining time on harder questions, you'll do great. So what we're going to do now is we're going to be doing question 8 on the specimen admissions test paper on the website. So firstly, let me explain what the question is. So consider counting on your hand. So usually you'd start with your thumb then you count to your first finger, your second, your third, and then your pinky. Then you go back to your third finger, your second, your first, and then back to your thumb. So by counting this way, what finger will you be at if you count all the way up to 2013? Unless you want to try actually count on your fingers all the way up to 2013 and lose all the time you have in the exam, <gasps> we found a better way to do it. So let me show you. Your thumb will be number one, then your first finger will be number two, then number three, number four, number five, then your third finger will be number six, number seven, number eight, and then you'll be back to number nine on your thumb. So the easiest way to do questions like this is to try find some sort of cycle or pattern. So let's start writing down how you'd count on your hand. So you start with your thumb, then you'd be on your first finger, your second, your third, and then your little finger. Then you go back to your third, your second, your first, and then your thumb again. And let's just keep writing this out. So you'd have your first, your second, your third, your little finger, your third, your second, your first, and then your thumb. Now, if we carefully look at this, you can clearly see there's some sort of pattern that repeats. Between your thumb and then your first finger, there is a pattern that occurs every eight that resets. So that pattern being your thumb, first finger, second finger, third, your little finger, then your third, then your second, then your first. So this means there's a cycle that repeats. So since we know that this cycle happens every eight numbers, if we can find the highest multiple of eight that is less than 2013, which with a little bit of trial and error, you can work out that would be 2008, we know that at 2008, we are at our first finger. So that means at 2009, you'd end up at your thumb. And then from here, you can quite literally count on your fingers and see what finger you end up at when you get to 2013. So if at 2009, you're on your thumb, 2010, you'd be on your first finger, 2011, you'd be on your second, 2012, you'd be on your third, and hence at 2013, you'd end up at your little finger. So that means the answer to the question is your little finger. I just did this on a big piece of paper, but you'll be doing it on a small booklet like this. After the test, I was relieved. However, I was also excited to find out whether I did enough to get an interview. So the next stage, uh, I can say I remember this clearly. I was in my geography class and I quickly checked my phone, which I probably shouldn't have. But I see I get an email from uh, the school uh, saying I got an interview. I was so excited. Yippee! Try run through UKMT intermediate math challenge questions because they have a similar feel to the admissions test questions. Doing those UKMT questions definitely helped me uh, build up my confidence. The atmosphere at King's Math School uh, to me is very relaxed yet still hard working. 
I'd say the thing I look forward to most is uh, working on the big boards we have all around the school. The location here is also amazing because you're only a 10 minute walk from the London Eye and a 20 minute walk from Westminster. So you're really at the center of London. So one of the things you might not know about uh, King's Math School is that we have uh, weekly sports sessions. So for two hours on every Friday, you get to choose a sport and you do that sport. There's also many clubs uh, from robotics clubs. Uh, we have a politics club, a philosophy club. We even have juggling club. My final tips for if you're just about to do the admissions test is firstly, don't worry if you find the exam hard. It's meant to be a challenging exam. Try get a good night of sleep because the more energy you have, the more energy you can put into the exam. And finally, try to use the exam as a way to test your skills and see how far you can push yourself.